Though 50 years have passed since President Kennedy's assassination, the fascination with the man has not. Robert Dalek is a historian and is the author of Camelot's Court, Inside the Kennedy White House, and he joins us here live. And Robert, for our international audience, describe this whole idea of Camelot. Well, Camelot, which lives on, is the idea that there was a special moment in the country's history when this Kennedy administration provided such hope for a much brighter future, perhaps an end to the Cold War, an end to a conflict with the Soviet Union and with China. And so there was the feeling that Kennedy's youth, his uh, enthusiasm, his rhetoric, he was a brilliant spokesman, so to speak, for peace and for a better day ahead. And Americans remember that to this day. You see, they don't often remember what a president does, but they remember his words, and they remember if he were an inspirational figure. Kennedy, to this day, has approval ratings of between 75 and 85%. There's no other president in recent history who touches him. Well, and to say that Americans were captivated by the coverage of his assassination would be a huge understatement. And I want to play you something from a couple of journalists who covered the assassination at the time, and they note how this forever changed news coverage. By 6 o'clock that night, 95, 97 percent of the TV sets owned in the United States were on and stayed on and people were glued to the coverage. Newspapers, print journalism was the big thing. Suddenly, and I saw this happen within days of the assassination, people were holding press conferences and they were holding up till the TV cameras all got set up. How much did the country change because of this assassination? You know, Lane, it was a blow to the country's self-esteem, to what we call its amour propre. This is not the way politics is conducted in America. For a president to be killed was just such an unacceptable event. Now, there had been a president named William McKinley who was killed in 1901, but 50 years after his death, he was forgotten. Kennedy, because of television, still has this phenomenal hold on the public's imagination. We can see him, the live televised press conferences he had, charming, witty, young, and of course there's a certain irony in all this in that uh, he looked so vibrant and so energetic. In fact, he had a lot of health problems, but this was hidden from the public. It's all part of this Camelot myth. Well, and of course, you know, he had the family to go along to complete the picture. Absolutely. You know, when Kennedy was campaigning for office, you wrote about how he promised that someone, promised someone that the key for the country is a new foreign policy that will break out of the confines of the Cold War. And you also wrote about the brilliance of several of Kennedy's closest advisors, like his Secretary of Defense, his National Security Advisor. Yep. How much did he depend on them? Initially, he depended on them a lot. But he was very frustrated by the Bay of Pigs failure. And he walked around after that saying, how could I have been so stupid? And he went to see Charles de Gaulle in France. And de Gaulle said to him, get the smartest people around you, giving the best advice they can give. But at the end of the day, you must make up your own mind. And he remembered what Harry Truman said, the buck stops here. And so he became much more self-dependent after that. Well, times have changed, and obviously Washington is mired in gridlock. How would President Kennedy do now? Well, it's such a different world. With the 24-7 news cycle, you see, would we not know about his womanizing, about his health problems? Uh, there would have been huge difficulties. The fact that he only had a 1,000 days it's a tabula rasa, an unwritten slate. You can write anything on it that you like. And so, you know, it it's, gives him a kind of standing that any president who serves for four or eight years really can't achieve. All right. Author and historian Robert Dalek, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. My pleasure.